China Daily, National Ballet names new principal dancer. Stay informed. CGTN calls attention to the plight of Afghan civilians under American sanctions. Twitter will not promote its trade. Authorities to pick cotton in the far western region of Xinjiang. BBC says there is new evidence of Uyghur forced labor in China's cotton industry. In the case of state-affiliated media entities, Twitter will not per... Oops, sorry. State-financed media organizations like BBC in the UK or NPR in the US are not defined as state-affiliated media despite almost completely government-funded. What is state-affiliated media? We are always discredited because we are state media. In today's episode, we will talk about how Western social media is making a concerted effort in completely silenced voices that differ from Western government and mainstream corporate media narratives. How is life? <laughs> it's a, a really retro metal pin, uh, but I call it a medal. And uh, I'm looking forward to giving these away to people on Twitter who are telling Chinese stories well. This is Andy Boren, who is reporting Shanghai. He offers unique views on his Twitter feeds, which has grown to over 20,000 followers. And he is the first foreigner in the country to be labeled by Twitter as China state affiliated media. Uh, your account will also be uh, more or less shadow banned. So, for example, if you don't follow me on Twitter and you search Andy Borham, my name, um, I won't come up. Uh, more or less, uh, your account is silenced, uh, which I think is pretty unfair. If you try to search for China Daily on Twitter, it will not come up in a single search result. And let's try some keywords like China, put China on it, search. No, 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 no. Let's put NPR instead. Here are a bunch of stories. Andy joins a long and growing list of journalists working in the Chinese media who have been punished for sharing opinions that differ from the narratives of Western governments and Western mainstream corporate media. Twitter is very clearly targeting anyone who poses, uh, anyone from any country who poses a challenge to the mainstream Western media narrative. Uh, we all know just by looking back at the Iraq uh, war, the Iraq invasion, um, that media in the US was an intrinsical part of manufacturing consent of Americans uh, for that invasion. They posted, uh, wrote a lot of reports uh, that were featuring what we now know, obviously, as you know, very false information. So the result is that Twitter censorship is extending its reach beyond that. What's the word? How like heated the, the discussions have become in, in, in the West in terms of Anybody who is speaking against whatever is up for harassment. One member of our team uh, was a kind of a victim of doxing online. Like uh, some people released uh, some of his private information, uh, information about relatives, ad uh, home addresses. People are being harassed and bullied for simply saying, hold on a minute, no, this is the truth. Mongol Press is an independent journalistic initiative who agreed to speak with us under anonymity. They say speaking against Western censorship has led to increased clampdowns and could get them fired from their other jobs or disappeared. Being suspended from Twitter was a little bit of a wake-up call for us. It, it has become quite evident in recent years that Silicon Valley companies like Facebook, Twitter, uh, the big major information output companies, so to speak, they do have like under the table or even sometimes public agreements with the US government and what kind of content they need to publish and even regulate or how they should regulate it. We have no financial backers. We're doing it all in our own time. We're investing ourselves. I think the term is independent or citizen journal journalism or something like that. It's kind of our obligation to show the truth. So I think that's one of the major reasons that not just we us getting suspended and many other content creators getting suspended for essentially show, showing the truth of what's happening in various situations in the world. Well, I think it's very important for 
uh, there to be an inclusive arena for free speech, uh, where all, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Um, Ready? Ready! Defending and respecting users' voice is one of our core values at Twitter. Commitment to freedom of expression. Censorship is not a part of our mission or platform. I'm proud that our values at Facebook are inspired by the American tradition, which is more supportive of freedom of expression than anywhere else. So much for freedom of speech. We run a list of mainstream media reports on China's internet. Guess what? The keywords turn out to be propaganda. Interestingly, the list shows how themselves are coordinating a propaganda campaign against China. Look at the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and BBC. Their narratives on China are exactly the same. It's almost as if they are working together. Twitter has publicly announced it shares its research with institutes like SB. The SB, this institute, is funded by the US government and the US web makers. The institute makes reports. The media pick up the stories, social media amplifies them, and politicians sanction. That has become the way Western propaganda and money works. Now that Elon Musk has bought Twitter, saying he wants more freedom of speech and expression on the platform, especially concerns over shadow bans and silencing alternative voices, will this actually happen? I guess we'll have to wait and see.